Good evening, world. This is Tweed Cadillac, the original party rocking player. You are tuned in to Dusty Vision TV. Just give me a little bit of peace. A steady job and some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace. A steady job and some food to eat. Yeah, man, let's let's start all the way from the uh, from the beginning before music even came into play, before radio came into play. Um you grew up in South Central, right? Uh yeah, sir. Okay. What was your upbringing like? You know, mom, dad, you know, did you have, were they both around? Actually, no. Uh, I was raised by my grandmother, and I found my dad years later and uh, grew up in South Central L.A., as you stated, uh, in the 30s. That was the stomping grounds. That's where I, I got my knowledge, my 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 poise, my finesse, my gift to gab, it was all cultivated right right there. But look, man, you know what's kind of ironic? What's up? I don't know whether or not you know this or not, but for some reason, God really put this together. I don't know what his reason or intentions were, but just out of coincidence, today is the 29th year anniversary of the debut of our album. What? It came out today, 29 years yeah. ago. Ain't that a trip? That's crazy, dog. I didn't even think of that. Man, and guess what? What a lot of other people don't know is April 29th, the day, the, the day after we dropped was the day of the L.A. riots. Of course. We dropped, and then the riots was the very next day. That's so, funny. I mean, it's like, it's a milestone, to say the least. And then I'm doing an interview 29 years later. I mean, that right there is a blessing. This is some, yeah, there's a higher power putting this whole thing together. And I love that, man. Sergio says, I remember being 12 years old and trying to get the tape at Sam Goody and the clerk not wanting to sell it to me. So I returned the next day and stole it. So he was at these basically he said he returned the wow. next day and st I mean I'm I'm not condoning stealing but um let, let's kind of go in chronological order you know as much as we can because I definitely want to talk about the rights and how your album came out around that time which is so coincidental but um you mentioned in an interview that when you were coming up that South Central was a great place to raise a family um, you know things obviously changed when crack cocaine was introduced to the neighborhood gangs etc um, talk to me about what you remember you know, things in L.A. kind of taking a turn for the worse? Well, we were just snotty-nosed kids, basically. We uh, would go everywhere together because it was always strength in numbers. You kind of want to be some with somebody. We had to go to the skating ring or to the movies, you know. We wasn't really just going nutty on people. We was just kind of deep for our own safety. You know, man, it's old saying, like, in a black community, uh, your mother or your grandmother will tell you, if, if he goes somewhere with you, all oh, y'all better come back together or don't come back. Yeah. It's like, you know, you you got to go together and you got to come back together. So you couldn't run, you, you know, something go down, you had to do whatever you got to do, but everybody had to come back together. Mm -hmm. That 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 was really the premise of what... Uh, every neighborhood really stood for back then. Uh, then here comes crack. And that just changed the whole dynamic of a lot of things, man. In my neighborhood as well. I mean, uh, a lot of people didn't make it through. A lot of people went to prison. Uh, a lot of people got just messed over mentally, physically, spiritually, you know, and the effects are still there, man. It's, it's, it's really sad when you really think about it. Yeah. Well, let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about early West Coast rap. You know, obviously, early West Coast hip-hop was dominated by New York. How did it feel to you when you started to hear people from L.A. release rap songs? You know, Ice-T, Mixmaster, Spade, etc. I mean, these are guys who don't live in New York. They live, you know, 10 minutes away from you. Um, you know, take me back to that time. Well, actually, I listened to it. It didn't make me want to really be a rapper or nothing. I was more of a player. Man, we used to go to the little functions and stuff just to try to knock girls. You feel me? I really didn't have any uh, 
aspirations of, of being an artist until I went to a concert at the Hollywood Palladium. Uh, it was UTFO, uh, I think it was LL, a few other people, and I snuck backstage and I watched the show and hobnob with all the girls and I, I man, I, I was thinking to myself, man, I could do this. These cats ain't no cooler than I am. Feel me? And I just said, man, I'm going to do it too. Fuck it. And basically, that's what inspired me really to even become an MC. So I would listen to the songs like, as far as like West Coast Ice-T really kind of uh, inspired me because he lived in the 40s, which was like about 20 blocks from where we was. Uh-huh. And I, I would see him going down Western in the Red Porsche back in the day. And a lot of his people from from the street that he was on, I actually knew. And it was like, wow, I, I kind of watched his rise. And it was like, wow, man, I want to be a part of this now because I see it's something that could be lucrative. And I and always had a way with words and a gift to gab. So just try to, you know, get it cracking, as they say. She said she wanna see the city bud She don't wanna ride the city bus Because she's new to the town I advise look for truth The ears are lost in the sound Brains are lost in the cloud Dead from all of the smoke That's the reason why the ostrich hides his head in the ground That's the reason why the monster even puts on a mask And we turn the city green to blend in with the grass The city scene made a crash I fell in love with it twice Had to tell her goodbye cause she fell in love with the night I couldn't keep up I tried to bring it down from the sky But the clouds were so nice that she took a nap for a while And when she woke up I finally had a kid and a lady Bone told me saw the other day with the baby ain't life crazy i think about it once in a while when it's cloudy outside and the sun goes none of these drugs do what they supposed to yeah and what's the point of hurting people that you're close to yeah most of my life i've been following stars knowing i ain't really at the go that far come to find out is the truth i already know yeah I'm spinning out a cylinder, moving, I'm in reverse Committing crimes of passion, judging jury at first But I love that girl, been my woman since day one Had a couple of kids in the house, the job done So what happened while we ain't loving no more? Maybe I should take some blame instead of taking the score But me and more don't go, I'm begging you gotta change We can work it out even through pleasure and pain Good evening world, this is Tweed Cadillac, the original party rockin' player you are tuned in to Dusty Vision TV. Just give me a little bit of peace. A steady job and some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace. A steady job and some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace. You said the word knock. Did, did you mean like knock as in like like on the pimp status as far as, you know, getting girls? Or when you say knock, you just try yes, to get girls? Yes, 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 that's what I was talking okay, about. Okay, so you were, yeah, you were pimping. You were pimping. I, I've done a little bit of everything. I was a player, then I was a pimp, then I was a player, and now I'm an old dude. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I didn't I, I I didn't did it all the way across the board, man. Yeah. yeah. I was a hustler, man. I did everything. Man, I, I sold turtles, live turtles yeah. on Hollywood Boulevard. Me and DJ Aladdin would go downtown and buy turtles what? and go on Hollywood Boulevard. I mean real live turtles. I've sold super soaker water guns. I'm just a hustler. Yeah, I feel you. I found out that it really wasn't for me. Mm-hmm. Thought it was, you know, it was fun at first, but then that fun could turn into quick pain and agony. Things happen that you least expect. Yeah. So, you know, man, just a learning experience, man, as you really be out there in the streets and you really have to fit figure out and realize what your purpose is. And that wasn't it for me. Yeah. And, and that whole pimping ain't easy term is true. Like you think it's hard taking care of one woman, try taking care of three or four and they're all, you know, hungry or they're all on their period or whatever the case is. It's yes. <laughs> it's not a fun life. 
there's too many personalities, man. And, yeah. You know, it's hard enough to maintain four dogs. Exactly. <laughs> and, and they could all be pedigree animals. There's still going to be some animosity, mm-hmm. you know, some, 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 some scraps in the backyard. I mean, things happen, man. Yeah. Well, let's talk about my all-time favorite producer, top five musician of all time. Uh, obviously, DJ Quick. He's gone. Oh on, man, yeah, he's gone on oh, record. Oh man, let me cut you off. Okay. Let me cut you off Hopefully. right now. Check this out. I was I was sitting here a little bit earlier, right? Uh-huh. And, uh huh. And I was telling my folks, I said, "Man, do you realize every time I get an interview, they they always ask me about DJ Quick, mm-hmm. and, and I was thinking to myself, I wonder if DJ Quick when he get interviewed." Do they ask him about me? About tweet. And then when I thought about it, I'm like, I'm like, nah, probably not. <laughs> well, shit. If I ever, if I ever like, interview, um, DJ, if I ever interview DJ Quick, I'm gonna specifically ask him about Tweet Cadillac. That's on everything exactly. I love. <laughs> but you know, just, asking, yeah. go ahead. I've been asking questions about DJ Quick for 29 years. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, 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 what do you want to know, yeah, I, what do you want to know? just the, just the one, you know, question. Cause he's gone on record, you know, saying that you discovered him, you know, that is that true? That's absolutely a hundred percent true. Okay. Yes. Okay. Talk to me about that day. Just give me a quick synopsis of what happened. Uh, we used to have a party line, a nine, seven, six number yeah, back in the day, the penthouse players party line. And, uh, his sister, called in and I would go up there in the evenings and I'd be on the switchboard. That's back when, when it was switchboards and I'd be on the switchboard answering calls and trying to get that dollar 99 up out of them. Right. Mm-hmm. And then it was his sister and, uh, she was talking about her brother was the DJ and I'm like, man, well, we kind of need a DJ. And, uh, we linked up, talked for a minute and, uh, I gave him a project to do. I always want to rap off of uh, Pain by the Ohio Players. Okay. So I asked him, could he flip it? And it took him about three days, and he flipped it. And I was impressed, and I'm like, man, this kid, we're going to do something. And basically, that's that's kind of how it went down. Yeah, that's dope, man. All right, that's my only DJ question uh, that I have, so I'm going to move on. I do have an easy question down the line, so I'm going to just forewarn you, my man, Okay. <laughs> It's all good. <laughs> but uh, let's talk about 1992, a very interesting year in my life. I was 14. Uh, very good year for music from what I remember. Just 92, 93, 94 was just such a great time for music. You guys released Paid the Cost, which, yeah, it is the only album uh, released by Penthouse Players Clique. Now, regarding the, the Paid the Cost album, um, Actually, someone posted in the comment right here. Here we go. Got a handful of this tape during the Rodney King riot from Musicland. LOL. <laughs> a lot of people stole your tape, man. I hope you got paid for that shit. No, I got a lot of people stole tapes that I had. <laughs> just laying around my spot. Oh, just like stuff that you recorded that probably was just a one and done and you never yeah. saw again? Yeah. Damn. Or, man, uh, and how many tapes have I even given out? The, the ironic, man, I'll never forget this. I think we was out maybe maybe a month, and we went to a, a restaurant, and there was a bootlegger that was in front of the restaurant and was selling our stuff. Damn. And he didn't even realize that it was us. He was trying to tell us, yeah, man, I got this new shit. Man, you know, man, these some players. These some players, man. He's talking all this mad stuff, right? And never looked up to look me in my face to see that I'm that guy on that cover player. You know, man, I thought it was just just funny as fuck to me. Damn, man. I didn't get mad, you know. I didn't do a, a, a EPMD and, and knock over, over the whole shit. And, yeah, Tupac. Yeah, I didn't too. do none of that. I thought that shit, if they bootlegging you, that must be cool. You're doing something right. That must be all right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. Well, talk to me about 92 specifically. I would love to know what you were going through during the riots. You know, you first saw Rodney King, uh, you know, get beat by the cops and, you know, the police ended up getting off and, you know, it just led to an uprising in L.A. Talk to me about, you know, what what, uh, what you were going through during that time, what you remember. 
I remember that day vividly. I mean, completely vividly. And the reason being is, uh, I, I, uh, just got an apartment with a little penthouse money on 65th and, and Vanets. And I had like a balcony and we out there chilling and stuff. And next thing you know, all hell was breaking loose. We looking at the news and everything, right? And it just so happened, one of my best friends that was kicking it with me that day, he's a, a, a church guy. And I'm like, man, come on, man. That man, we need to get out there. It's going down. I actually wanted to go out there, right? And then he said, no, nah, Tweed. Man, don't, man, don't do that, Tweed. And I'm sitting there looking like, Man, people is man, is they going crazy, right? I actually want to get out there. I figured, man, anybody gonna know me. I might could give me something, something. So the ironic thing was, just out of coincidence, it was a bus station that was on. Slauson, no, no, fifty fourth and Van Ness. They actually used that as a command post. Next thing I know, I'm I'm on the balcony, me and me and my partner, and we looking at police rolling down the street, caravanning with shotguns all out the window yeah. and tanks and all kind of shit, man. And I'm, I'm just watching them. So it's like, wow, I better keep my ass indoors. Yeah. So I did not go out that night at all. I had to rethink that situation. Good and point. I didn't do, I, man, I didn't move. And me and that man stayed there, watched the news footage, sat on the balcony, Watch the cops just go crazy all up and down Venice. Mm. A very vivid memory. And the funny part about it is, I just talked to him maybe about a week ago, man. Mm. Big shout out, man, to Malik, man. I just talked to him, man. We still friends after, you know, years. I've been knowing this man over like 35 years. Yep, I remember exactly where I was. Yeah. And I just remember people coming to school the next day with brand new shoes, brand new jackets. I was just like, man, had a, probably had a burn hole on the side, but hey, yeah, we're rocking that shit. Excuse me. <laughs> it's all good. Somebody told me, somebody told me, he said, you ain't got to go out there, man, and loot to eat. He said, after all the base heads get all of the stuff, all you got to do is have a little money and you'll be able to buy it. All the stuff that they just stole. And sure enough, yep. <laughs> it, it, it was coming with everything, man. I bought a, I bought a case of Remy Martin for a hundred dollars. Damn. Did you hear what I, <laughs> I said? Love that shit. Did you hear what I said? I sure did. Oh, boy. Case, Damn. A case that is of crazy. Remy Martin. And it was fifths. That's I crazy. bought a case of Remy Martin for a hundred dollars. Uh. So yeah, all you had to do was just have some loot and man, it was good. Damn. Good evening, world. This is Tweed Cadillac, the original party rocking player. You are tuned in to Dusty Vision TV. Just give me a little bit of peace. Steady job and some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace. Steady job and some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace. Well, something shortly after the riots that happened that was very monumental even to this day was the gang truce. Unfortunately, it didn't last too long, but what do you remember? Because I'm, I'm pretty sure you knew some people who may have been involved, you know, but um, what do you remember about that whole time? And um, I've heard that the cops just didn't want it to happen. I actually thought it was going to work, to be honest with you. Because, uh, it, man, it, it's extremely hard to get two, two opposing factions together no matter what. I mean, it's like trying to trying to put the KKK in the same room with the Black Panthers. I mean, yeah. Man, it was an impossible task, to say the least. But it had a little bit of promise to it. Feel me? Yeah. I actually thought that it would actually work. And now, here we are 29 years later mm-hmm. and it's Still, is kind of like the same, feel me? Yeah. Still, I mean, Bloods might not kill Crips on a daily. Crips might not kill Bloods, but it still is some violence out there. Still is some, 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 some fuckery going on. And any given time, you can be a victim. 
So I kind of feel bad that it didn't work because it's been numerous attempts over the years to, you know, get it back formulated so it can really happen. But these youngsters, man, they on some, mm. they wasn't raised on Similac. Really. Man. Yeah, so <laughs> crack or some shit. Yeah, man, they on some other stuff, man, yeah. too, man. Every drug that you I can mean, imagine. Exactly, and we didn't even know what peels was basically back. Right. You know, it's it was like all it, about weed and maybe cool. beer. You know, what I'm saying a wine cooler. Yeah, that, that's all it was. I've been drinking old English since I was 15 years old. <laughs> all we was on was some old English, you know. Yeah. But we think about it. Look how many people that got socked up off of old English. Look how many people died because of the effects of old English. Oh yeah. And look, old English is still in the stores as we speak. Mm. So what's going to really change, man? We have to change our own way of thinking to make a change. Man, you got to want to change, dude, because you could be in the hood forever. This cat's, I know, I can go to my hood right now. Dude's still in the park, you know, but that's their neighborhood. I mean, you can't tell them, that, man, you need to leave because some people don't, don't never leave. Some people are born in the hood and will die in the hood, but some people will die in the hood been in the hood for their whole life and don't get murdered. So, I mean, it is people that can can do that and really have a sense of neighborhood and what it really meant back in the day. Because in our neighborhood, they used to hold block parties. And all the celebrities, I remember seeing Switch would come, Lakeside. They would uh, fence off the whole block on Western yeah. and 39th Street. And it went like, like, the, the oh, whole block that must have been all the way dope, down man. all the kids all the neighborhood could come man it was the cotton candy and ice cream and food and you know and then all these entertainers would come and, and perform for free you know and so it was like the hood really used to be a good place to be man Damn. it really used to be cool I mean, I mean sincerely I remember it was cool man yeah, drive-in theaters and things, but then, you know, motherfuckers started acting up and roller skating <clears throat> rinks, like all of that, man. I'm 43, so I'm, I'm, I was at the tail end of, of when they started closing all that down. It just, it really sucks. And I was there. I was yeah. there when it was up and active and fun. <laughs> we would go skating every Sunday, feel me? So, uh, man, I, I was a skate king. The only trophy I ever won, nice. one in my life, was from backwards skating, That's dope. men and boys. Ah. That's the first trophy I ever won in my life. What spot did you go to? I mean, World on Wheels or? Well, yeah. no, nah, we went to the one on on Washington and Arlington. It was called the Skadian. Okay. And uh, the DJ name was Bubba. And ironically, that's when I was like a teenager. Ironically, I ended up meeting him like years later. You know, and he's like, you look familiar. I'm like, you look familiar. And we started talking. And he's like, yeah, man, I used to be the DJ at the skating rink. And I remember then, you know, and he's another guy that knew all of these oldies. He's another guy that got turned me kind of on to, to oldie music as well, Damn. too. And, yeah, man, man, Washington, man. Washington and Arlington, man, that was my spot. We did the world on wheels, but it was much more flyer on Washington and Arlington. Nice. I did the skate land. I did the Cerritos. Cerritos was my spot. We did the skate, one in Hollywood. Yeah. 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 We did the one on, on Sunset in Hollywood. But man, my my home for skating was Washington Origin. That's dope, man. Well, let me uh let me ask you something else. And I normally try not to ask the same questions my guests have already answered on other shows. Uh, but I have to ask this question from my audience even though you answered it on Soren Baker's show. Shout out to Soren Baker. I really like that dude and what he's doing for hip hop. Um, tell me about the time you first heard quite possibly one of the greatest disc records of all times, No Vaseline. Yeah, well, I, all I remember is we was in, sitting in the, uh, in the car and Easy played the song and me and Quick was kind of looking at each other like, damn, we want to say too much, you know? But, man, and Easy just didn't even trip. 
it was like it ain't it, he wasn't phased at all. Easy E played. He for wasn't you, right? phased at all. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, he wasn't phased at all. And the same thing happened with Bone. He played us some bone stuff. And I couldn't under really I couldn't really understand what they were saying. And we took the tape and listened and listened. Got bits and pieces out of it. And it took me a while to really understand what Bone was really about. I didn't grasp it at first. I did not grasp it at first. But once you listened, then you really could really see that, you know, where they was headed. Oh, yeah. And they were super talented, man. Big shout out to all of Bone, man. Yeah, in hindsight, yeah. One of the greatest rap groups of all time, period. Top 10 exactly, of all man. time, of hi all hip hop. Yeah. In my opinion, lazy, I'm sure a lot. Lazy Bone is a man, man. Lazy Bone El did some crazy. El Burner, man, we did some man. He know how to knock them too, and boy, we was out there knocking. I mean, not only greatest group, but if you individually, uh, you know, break down some of the best lyricists. Period. I mean, Busy Bone, Lazy. I mean, oh, yeah. some of the best lyricists of all time. Yeah, deep, con deep conceptually. Man, everything about Bone was good. They just needed to be nurtured to really figure out how great they was. And once they figured it out, shit, that's why they still out there getting loot. Yeah. yeah. That's what's up, man. Yeah. Well, what's I, up? I want and to, go ahead, go ahead. I was easy. I was a song at Crossroads wasn't about easy. And if easy would have been alive to be able to hear that song, he would have been super proud of that song. Yeah. Feel me? It just happened to have been about him. But that was a hell of a song, dude. Yeah. A hell of a song. Yeah, man. To this day, dog. Good evening, world. This is Tweed Cadillac, the original party rocking player. You are tuned in to Dusty Vision TV. Just give me a little bit of peace. Steady job and some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace. Steady job and some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace. I want to talk a little bit more about your journey. You know, at the beginning, I'm always fascinated with contracts and shit like that. But your first record deal, was it a shitty deal? You know, to be honest, looking back, like most new well, artist deals are. Well, no, it, 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 uh, it's hard to answer that because I wasn't originally supposed to sign. Ham had signed the, the, the deal. I wasn't even supposed to have signed at all. The thing was... We're going to blow up this penthouse and I'll be able to get a solo deal. And at the last minute, Party Records came, stepped in, and amended me to the contract. So it was like, huh, okay, that really wasn't our plan. But deals are deals, man. A dude told me that a deal really ain't worth the paper that, that it's on. written on because if they don't honor it, all you got is a piece of paper. That's it. So you... You can have a contract, because I, I learned that out the hard way on my first solo project, where I signed with a label, the paperwork was straight. The points, the publishing, everything was straight. Only thing, the dude did not honor the contract. Hmm. So, still got put in a dilemma. Hmm. So, what do I do? Chase is due for money. It costs money to chase money. Yeah. Feel me? You'll spend more money trying to chase the money, and then when you finally get close to the money, the dude could blow the money. He might not even have the money. But yeah, you might have won a judgment, but whether or not you get paid is a whole different thing. Cause my paperwork was straight. I think it's a Jew dude told me to get a lawyer to watch a lawyer. <laughs> he said, You hire a lawyer to watch a lawyer. <laughs> That's good shit. And, and I actually did that. My paperwork was in order. Everything was cool. Only thing what I didn't know is the dude never registered it with ASCAP. He never registered the the music at all. Mm. But the paperwork was was bulletproof. Feel me? Mm. All he did was put this shit on TuneCore. Was back then people wasn't familiar with TuneCore, mm -hmm. how they put you on all the little social media platforms and, and all the streams and all that type of shit, right? So you think that you're doing good. 
But as far as your publishing, it was nothing cracking. One, once I figured out what was up, tried to step to all the iTunes and people like that, they wouldn't even give me any, any information because my name wasn't on the paperwork. Damn. As far as TuneCore went. So I never retrieved any of that money back. Mm. So if you're out there listening, you know you are. You made some loot off Toast to the Fools. I know you did, and you know you did. So all you have to do, man, I hope you was able to feed your family, and you you enjoyed it. Mm. That's all I can say, man, because I'm going to get by either way it go, man. God going to bless me. So that's a, 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 a drop in the bucket, motherfucker. Mother motherfucker. Cold game, man. Cold, cold game. Did, did you know, having a... Let me ask you, because there was a big um, gap, you know, from your from like the 1992 album, and I think you and um, Player Ham hooked up in 2001, and then you released your, your solo joint in 2007. This is all according to Wikipedia. I could be wrong as fuck. I've been wrong as fuck in the past, so I apologize. But... No. But, um, no, that's actually true. Okay. Well, actually, 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 I did a compilation before that with uh, the Macadamic me and oh, DJ yeah, Aladdin. Right. Yeah, yeah, that one I just played. Okay, yeah. gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Um, let me let me ask you what 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 why why that's such the long gap where you just turned off to music like what was going on in your life? No, I had kids. Yeah. I was single up until the time, man. My first daughter was born in '93. And then I had another daughter in 94. So I, I turned into a family man, basically. Then you know how you get that itch like, damn, man, what am I doing? I got to get back to this music. So me and Aladdin hooked up, did the Macadelic Project. And then now the bug is, is back in me. Mm -hmm. I got my mojo back. So I said, man, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and do a, a solo album. Feel me? And then, uh, I just said, man, that's what I need to do. Gotcha. Well, let me, um, I want to ask you, I want to give you a few names and you just maybe share a, a little story or talk about your relationship with them. And then I want to end it by talking about your radio show. A um, few names. First one uh, that I want to ask you, Jerry Heller. What's, what was your relationship like with him? I, I've, I've heard you mention him before. That's why. Who was cooler than a fan to me, man. I, I like Jerry. I respected J.R. Jerry. He never did nothing bad to me. So for everybody that got a bad Jerry Eller story, me personally, I can't say that. Mm. I cannot say that. Jerry Eller looked out for me, gave me some money under the table, and just, man, Jerry Eller looked out for me. I remember a day vividly where I'm in South Central L.A., at my apartment, and I called Jerry Eller, and I said, man, can you just front me a little bit of money? I got a baby on the way, and can you look out? He said, all right, uh, just come on up to the to, to Wolfless. We get on the freeway, and it started raining, and my boy don't got no windshield wipers. Can you imagine being on the freeway with no windshield wipers in the storm and rain? By the grace of God, we got to, to, to the Willem Hills, got the check. I go to, to Beverly Hills to cast the check at the bank. The bank was tripping out on me. Like, who is this dude in here with this check? Yeah. They, like, was sending me to the left. Jerry, I called Jerry. Jerry called the bank, got the money for me, and we got back in the car and came back home. So that one gift of, of love and compassion, I will never have nothing bad to say about Jerry Eller, man. Damn, and think about all the people that he's done that for, prob probably, and just people don't know it. He died going to his grave with just taking care of people, and that's that's dope. I love hearing stuff like that, because you do hear all bad Jerry Heller stories. But, um, nah, not for me. You will never hear that. I love that. Jerry, Jerry, Jerry was a genuine dude, man. That's dope. I owe uh, Went to his book signing, you know, man. And man, Troy was uh, well, at least with me. Yeah, yeah. I can't say whatever he did. That's all that matters. With me, yeah. Stand up, dude. Yeah, yep. That's fair. Facts right there. It's all of yeah. It was your experience, so that's yeah. Now, what? Um, my only easy question for you, really quick, is um, were you 
uh, still in touch with him up until his untimely death? No, because I had moved out of uh, L.A. Okay. I, I, I ran to the suburbs, and I was completely out of touch. Gotcha. I, I was completely out of touch with everybody. I, I just I just wanted to be my government name. It's like, okay, it was a good run. Fuck it. Mm-hmm. I got caught up in where I don't want to be a wannabe, and, and man, I just... Basically, it kind of walked away, so to speak. It was there in me, and man, I was happy just being a father, and and you know having a family, some girls that that loved me unconditionally. They didn't care if I was tweet Cadillac. To this day, they still don't care. <laughs> so that's kind of where my head was at. That's dope, man. Good evening, world. This is Tweet Cadillac, the original party rocking player. You are tuned in to Dusty Vision TV. Just give me a little bit of peace. A steady job and some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace. A steady job and some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace. One other person who was obviously one of the biggest or be about to become one of the biggest moguls in rap history, not music history, um, back in the early 90s. I'm talking about Suge Knight. Did you ever run into Suge Knight? Oh, yes. I know Suge. I, I, I ain't got nothing bad to say about him. Suge Knight gave all three of us collectively $1,500 a month to uh, hold up while he was putting the label together. This is before oh. Death Row. Yeah, oh, man, he was you. with... Uh, that's that's an exclusive uh, right there. Uh, him and DOC had a situation. It was called Funky Enough Records. Yeah. And they was going to come out with that. And uh, it was a guy by the name of Thomas Klein that had a firm in Beverly Hills. And he was a financier. And Snoop paid us, damn Snoop, Shug paid us just to hold up until he got everything, you know, up and running. So we actually was, was that was a, a major situation that was wow. about to happen for us. But in the in, in the interim of all of that, it just didn't go down. I think Thomas Klein got indicted or some some happened, but it didn't go down. Okay. But she told me years later that he can get me out of the uh, you know the uh, uh, ruthless contract after Easy died. Hmm. You know, man, uh, we was at a session in Hollywood at Skip Sailors uh, uh, with Quick. And he pulled me to the side and said, man, you know, man, I, I can get you out of that situation. So, Chug, man, I ain't got nothing bad to say about him either, man. Yeah. Stand-up guy to me. I mean, he he, he went on to be a monster Changed to the others. But Changed the music world. He ain't never did nothing to me. Mm-hmm. He ain't never did nothing to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cool, cool, man. That's dope, dog. Um, well, I want to ask you about your radio show. Is that still going strong? Man, shit, ten years I love and, and that, man. that's dope. First and off, the funny part about it, yeah, go ahead. I did end up interviewing Jerry Eller. Nice. He was uh, uh, privy enough to come to my show, you know. And him and and, and, and uh, I want to give a shout out to Kevin Slow Jam and James. Oh, He's not man. really too radio that legend. I heard, you know what I heard? Uh, yeah, I have a friend who knows him, and he's yeah, his health is not too good right now. Yeah, well, I've been knowing him for years. Really? Okay. He's been one of my mentors. Radio that, legend, everybody. That, that, that guided me in, into this form that I'm in now. Told me the do's and don'ts. Told me how, how they're going to come and try to steal your catchphrases and listen to your playlist and, and listen to your show to hear the guests that you have. You know, they're not listening for you. They just want to get contact information. And everything that man told me, came out to be true. Mm. It's like it. If I interview Mickey Howard today, then a week later, she's on uh, another show because they was listening to my show. Mm-hmm. So I've interviewed basically over 85% of everybody that's been on TV One Unsung from Dion Warwick to mm-hmm. War to to uh, the Stylistics, the Spinners, the Tim Prees, the Dale Phonics, if I keep going, it's going to sound like that's I'm bragging. Dope, like. That's dope. I love hearing stuff like that, man, because that's why I started this, like I told you, is to interview the people that I grew up listening to. And how awesome of a feeling is it that, you know, 
Jerry Heller, not awesome that Jerry Heller's passed away, but he's he's gone. But you have something cemented in history, an interview with Jerry fucking Heller. And I've had people who have done interviews with me and unfortunately met their untimely demise, R.I.P. Badass, LBC, um, and just a couple of other people. But such a good feeling, man, to know that you're 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 putting your your snap in history, dog. I already know that it's been told to me by several people that I truly respect. And speaking of that, uh, Mr. Marshall Rock Jones, the bass player that was a turban in the Hall Players. After I interviewed him, we actually became friends, and he was very deep. And he used to tell me all kind of stuff about life. He passed. Mm. Uh, Brenda Jones from the Jones Girl. I interviewed her. She passed. Uh, Louis Rankin, the original Jamaican Dandara. Mm. Uh, I interviewed him, and, and he died like maybe a couple of weeks later. Yeah. So I understand that, that, that what it is, man, to, yeah. to really do something monumental. And all my friends now are in the R and B world. I really don't even have that many rap friends anymore. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? I interviewed Shirley Murdoch about a month ago. Beautiful spirit, beautiful lady, man, man, man. Nice. It's been phenomenal, man. I actually, enjoy what I'm doing now because all these groups that, that like I used to say, you listen to and now you have a chance to actually talk to them mm-hmm. and a lot of them don't even know that I used to be a rapper. Mm. I really don't want them to know that I did a song called Rolling the Pimp Lane. You feel me? <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> so I, 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 I basically don't really like that. bring that. Yeah, yeah, I don't really bring that in, you know, to their attention but man, I've had uh, AWB, uh, Stone City Band, man, it's been since, man, Mickey Howard, Dion Warwick, uh, the, uh, the Manhattans, the Spinners. Damn, man, man, the list off, off the top of my head. That's crazy. Uh, and, and my favorite idol that I always loved was Patrice Russian. Took me three years to get her booked, but I interviewed Patrice. Nice. And she showed me so much love. She sent me an autograph, collector's item, album signed, and I got it to this day. So it's like, man, it's been a beautiful experience, man. My 3.2 FM is going to roll, man, until uh, the wheels fall off. Yeah, and t- if they fall off, I'm going to be in the hubcaps, and we're <laughs> still going to roll. Fred, Fred Flintstone style. T- tell everybody uh, where, where they can find it again. I know you just mentioned it, but tell everybody where they can find your show. Uh, it's Blog Talk Radio. Blog Talk Radio backslash 93 Tweet FM every Thursday, 7 to 9 p.m. Pacific time. Matter of fact, I'll be on tomorrow with the After Six Cruise Mix. Nice. Nine, Going down. Yeah, 93 Tweet, T-W-E-E-D FM. And I'll put a link F-M. down below. So everybody can uh, check it out, Doug. It's it's really been a pleasure, man. I enjoyed this interview. Flew by, man. Um, thank you so much for for joining the program. Any other shout outs or anything else you want to promote? Uh, the floor is yours. Oh yes, of course, man. I want to say if you want anything about Tweed, if you want to know my history, my 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 life, my lifestyle, go to tweedcalac.com. Videos, pictures, apparel, music, uh, the radio show. Just anything that you might really want. If you want to know who I am, where I've been, where I'm going, tweetcadillac.com. A one-stop shop, as they say, man. Big right. shout out to uh, Chocolate Patrice Banks from uh, Grand Central Station. She's our latest sponsor. One-stopfunkshop.com is, is her little cup. Holler at her, too, man. Tell her Tweet Cadillac sent you. It's all good. Also, Fun Diggity. Dot com five star rating on Yelp, DoorDash available. Uh, they're located at 222 East 120th Street, City of Los Angeles. Tell them Tweet Cadillac sent you homemade funnel cakes right there, piping hot. You can create your own. It's going down. MagnificentWax.com as well. They're available in Walmart. Uh, also go to MagnificentWax.com, order it. Turn to Cadillac sent you. 